Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, look at that. That is just beautiful. It's like 95% capped. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Chris Brown here again today with something a little different than my usual no-nonsense know-how stuff. We're in early October and I'm gonna be harvesting the honey out of my hive. So figured I'd do a little video and show you everything that's involved. This isn't a how-to and I'm not a professional beekeeper by any means. I've had these bees for six years now. I get honey off them every year. And if any of you uh, professional beekeepers see this and you have any tips for me, let me know. Comment that down below, appreciate it. Now I do usually wait till like middle or end of October before I do this. I only do it once a year, but I'm gonna be taking a trip so I wanna knock this out. Uh, I've already smoked them and basically uh, you, you smoke the hive a little bit, usually 10 minutes prior, uh, just to, it reduces their ability uh, to sense and communicate with each other. So hopefully keeps things calm when you open the hive up, right? And then I've got my gloves, uh, top bee suit apron, pry bar, and occasionally I use a leaf blower too. So let me suit up. Hopefully these camera angles come out okay. I said I wasn't really gonna talk too much, but I have a hard time doing that. So I just keep this piece of glass on here to prevent, you know, it's their roof, prevent water from going in there. And uh, these lower boxes are what they get to keep for the winter time. They're usually about 70, 80 pounds of honey in these. Uh, and then this hot top honey super, this is what I'm gonna take for myself. By the way, you usually, oh, look at this. So I haven't opened this in a while and I do have quite a few hive beetles. So I do have traps in there, but that's something every beekeeper deals with. Uh, I'm, I'm a pretty lazy beekeeper to be honest. So that wasn't a good sign. Probably quite a bit of them. Darn hive beetles. All right, well, luckily they're staying pretty chill today. Uh, not a bad idea to smoke them a little bit more. Well, let's see if they put any honey in this top box. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is what happens when you don't service your hive often and look at it. I mean, they just glue this thing together. So I'm gonna be really prying this apart and probably murdering quite a few bees by mistake. It's that first frame, it's tough, but I'm trying not to make a mess with stabbing the honey. Once you get that out though, oh, there we go. Oh yeah, look at that, that is just beautiful. It's like 95% capped, oh yeah. That's good stuff. And now we'll just set all these here and get the rest off. Here's an example of a pretty much full capped. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start putting these uh, further away from the hive once they get it cl cleaned off that way. Um, get the bees, they don't start robbing my honey from me, right? You see, because if you leave them too close, they just start going back on. And this is, you can use a leaf blower to get all the bees off too, and the hive beetles as well. Although, that tends to disorient them and agitate them. So, not really a good practice. Another good way to get them all off is just slap them back and forth. But, that, again, really agitates the bees too quite a bit. Uh, clearly, when you're doing this, you don't want to have kids around or your neighbors out back pick a time when they're all back and away from you because you stir the bees up and they start buzzing around and causing the ruckus. You'll also notice I have a queen excluder underneath this honey super. So that goes in between the main boxes and it's just this little screen. I'll show you when I take it off, but it prevents the queen from coming in here and using these as a brood box because uh, then you're going to end up with larvae or larvae, whatever they're called. But you don't want baby bees up in here. You just want straight honey, right? Uh, another note is if I started taking this apart and I saw that there was a lot of uncapped honey in there, you can see this is all capped and, and that means it's reached the optimum moisture content. I think it's like 22% moisture content or whatever. They fan it until the water evaporates and when it's perfect, they cap it with wax. But uh, when you see that, you know it's ready to harvest. If there, like half of this was uncapped, I would button this back up and give them some time to, to finish it up and dry it out. Uh, because that then it won't last as long and it will spoil. But once it's capped like this, this will last forever. 
With those out, I can remove the Honey Super, Queen Excluder, and button her up for the winter. Next day, I'm ready to uncap these and spin them. Any guesses to how many pounds are here? Some of these combs are like, well, really juicy. Look how long those are. Since this is not a radial centrifuge, I'm gonna uncap one side at a time. You can use a lot of different tools. Some people will use a blowtorch and just uncap them with that or a, I tried this before. This is like a hot gun thing and you just cut them open with that. But I find that the best way I like is, well, I'm gonna go get something to put the wax in. There we go. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, you wanna make sure you're in closed doors because if the bees or any bees catch wind of you doing this, they're gonna to wanna to come party and uh, rob you of your honey. So this is all, you just try to cut the tops of the caps off and not go too deep, but also don't miss any. And that's it. Once you get them all, just go back over it. And any that you missed, you know, just poke them open or scrape them. It doesn't matter if you get any of this stuff in the honey. We're gonna filter that out later. And that's ready to drop into the centrifuge. And we'll just do that on th two more of them. Well, depends how big of a centrifuge you have. If you're good with this thing, you could take nice, clean, long sweeps and get the whole thing, but it's it's easy to dig in a little deeper than you have to. So if you just take little niblets like that, you won't uh, dig in too deep by mistake. With all three uncapped on one side, put your cover on and spin away. You do want to hold a good amount of pressure on the top of this because otherwise as it becomes unbalanced some frames have more honey it will want to start doing one of those you know this thing actually comes with legs too but i find it's much better on the floor one of those frames has got uh not too much honey in it so this one's really out of balance And I'd say I spun that for, oh, I don't know, a minute. And you kind of see the honey stop slinging onto the sides. You know it's time to uncap the other side and spin them again. If you run into hive beetles throughout doing this, and uh, just pluck those off. Not that, I mean, it would get filtered out anyway, but. And that's all there is to it. Got to repeat that for the rest of them. And then I'll probably heat this up and separate the honey from the wax, several methods and things you can do with that. Uh, but yeah, I'll also take these. And I like to set three frames at a time out in the backyard, but not on the hive, cause that can cause other bees to come try to rob the hive. So I'll set them over here in the carport and they find them and we'll clean them off. Let's see how long it takes them to find them. I didn't even finish setting it down and there's already one honeybee over here. I bet you, oh, here's two more just showed up. So they will be swarming all over these in no time. Here's another guy. Now, let me check back. As this becomes too full to spin and the frames want to start hitting the honey level, you do have to empty some out. I got this double screen. This is a thick mesh or, or coarse mesh and then a fine mesh below that. That's all the filtering I do. And I just weighed this bucket. It's uh, two pounds and three ounces. Yeah, two, two pounds, 2.7 ounces. So uh, yeah, this is what this looks like is you start dumping that on out of there. Boom. And looks like some good honey. Certainly takes a while, but 
it filters it out pretty good. I suppose instead of having to stop and keep cracking this valve, it would be better to just put the legs on and then leave the valve open and put that pan next to it. But uh, if I remember right, last, uh, it was like two years, three years ago I used these and it was just so rickety with them on there. So I'll have to make like a concrete base for it or something really rigid that doesn't uh, rock back and forth when there's an imbalance. An hour later, storm's starting to roll in. It's actually drizzling right now, but you can see the bees have found the honey and they're going crazy. There's only honey bees that I see on there. Nobody else robbing. Well, it could be other honey bee hives robbing, but it seems like they're all kind of going back over to the hive. And like I said, some guys say don't do this because it encourages robbing of the hive or whatever, but I've been doing it for know, five, six years now and never had a problem. So uh, it's, it's nice because they clean these out and then they're ready for use next year. They don't get moldy or anything like that. They, they lick them dry and then you can stow them away. I usually only do three frames at a time though and just make sure that uh, you're not gonna be using the area because as you can see, there's a lot of bees swarming around here. When you're all done, clean up is super easy with hot water and uh, the honey is water soluble so just rinse it right off. All said and done, got about a half bucket. This is food grade by the way. Got the scale zeroed out, so let's see what she weighs. 33 pounds, 5.2 ounces. Not bad. Would the, the bucket weigh two pounds or whatever it was? So, yeah, 30 pounds of honey off a little six inch. This is what the uh, smaller supers, too. You can get bigger honey supers as well, but I just keep, I'll probably get a bigger one next year. But 30 pounds of honey, ain't arguing with that. The last and final step is bottling your honey which I just used these uh, 16 ounce made in USA BPA free plastic honey jars. And you put this up, elevate it, and this valve works amazing for bottling it, way easier than trying to pour out of something. Uh, these are, let me open one up. These are actually self-sealing when you screw the lid down. It has a little, listen, boom, there you go. So it's kind of a professional uh, touch to it, right? And then you got some tasty honey. Now, I also use the eight ounce jars, which they're still on the way, so I got plenty more to fill up. And then I like to take an old Patron bottle, and like this is from 2018 right here. I don't know if you can even see it written on there, but I fill one of these up each year, and that is like my end of the world uh, honey supply, I guess. I'll, well, I keep more of it as well, but I, I think it's neat having one day I'll have a shelf with all these lined up from each different year, and uh, kind of cool. Oh, and for anybody wondering about the uncapped wax left over and the, the honey in there as well, I put this on the stovetop on either melt or in this case simmer to get it going. And then that'll all melt together and you turn it off, set it to the side, and when it cools down, all that wax will be a flat cookie on the top. I take that out and I make candles and other things with it. Or uh, yeah, I've even tried making lip balm with it too. And then the honey below is uh, still good. And that'll wrap up the overview of how I harvest my honey. Now, if any of you have actually watched this far, you deserve a treat. And what I'm gonna do is the first five people that comment tequila down below, I'll send you a free half pound or eight ounce jar of honey. Free shipping too. Just uh, comment tequila, first five people, I'll reach out to you and we'll, we'll figure it out, we'll work it out. So, uh, cause I really appreciate you guys watching, the few people that do watch these, these boring videos through and through. So we'll see if anybody even comments. But anyway, uh, that, this was my process for harvesting honey. And of course, everybody does things a little bit differently. These are the methods I've adopted over the years and uh, it works well for me. So what I, I like about this hobby is there's, there's so many different ways you could do it too. I mean, the, your mind is the limit when it comes to, to honeybees and there is no right way or wrong way to, as I see it. I mean, as long as you're getting honey and your bees are surviving, then you're doing things right. Anyway, so yeah, drop the video, some feedback, leave me a comment, you know, consider checking out one of my other videos. If you're new to the channel, subscribing, whatever, all that helps out and I really appreciate it. Uh, so this is Chris Brown here, no nonsense though, how, and hopefully I'll see you again. See ya.